link eight. We sat in St. James's till two o'clock. It wasn't warm, but we were out of the wind. Then Ginger said, I'm going to try around Trafalgar Square for a bit. Come in. I nodded. If it's okay with you, it's time I had a go at getting some dosh myself, but I'll feel better if you're somewhere around. He nodded. Fair enough. Tell you what, you try outside the National Gallery. It's not exactly the height of the tourist season, but there are always people about, and you can see into the square from the steps. We walked back along Piccadilly, down the Haymarket and along Pall Mall. Pall Mall, Pall Mall always, every time. The gallery wasn't fantastically busy, but there was a steady trickle of people going in and out. Some were sitting on the steps in spite of the cold. Ginger left me there. I watched him merge with the crowd and then turned my attention to the business of the day. It was hard at first, really hard. I stood watching people pass, trying to spot a likely punter. God knows what I was looking for, a kind face, I suppose, or at least someone who didn't look as if he'd swear or punch me in the mouth. It was futile, of course. You can't read people's characters and their faces. You never know what a punter's reaction is going to be, but I didn't know that then. Finally, I steeled myself and asked a guy at random. He growled, not a chance, and bounded up the steps, taking them two at a time. I wasted the next five minutes feeling hurt, rejected. I asked myself, how was it possible for a person to be sensitive to the beauty of fine art and at the same time insensitive to the feelings of a fellow creature? I took it personally, which is fatal. After a while, I realised this and began choosing guys and women at random, expecting nothing, telling them to have a nice day whether they gave or refused. I blunted the point of my own sensitivity in the flinty soil of their indifference till I too became indifferent and after that, it was easier. I worked till the gallery closed, standing sometimes, <coughs> sometimes sitting on the steps. My feet became numb and I was half frozen, but I stuck at it. And when the place closed at dusk and the punters drifted away, I counted up and found I'd collected just under four pounds. I stumped across to the square and found Ginger slumped on the bench. He looked up as I approached. How'd it go? I shrugged. Three pounds, 81. You? 2.44 and I'm frozen to the bone. Let's eat. We got pizza slices and coke. When Ginger wasn't looking, I bought 20 fags and a cheapo lighter and gave them to him. He said, you're balmy, kiddo. You don't even smoke. I was just glad of his company, but I didn't say so. In the evening, the wind strengthened and sleep began to fall. Except that it didn't fall. It rode the wind in horizontal lines, flaying foreheads and cheeks. I wished we were back in St. James's, but Ginger said it'd be locked now. We ended up in the doorway of a shop called China Craft on the Strand, huddled in our bags, waiting for the vaudeville theatre to close. Over there, said Ginger through chattering teeth, are some alcoves, right? Deep ones. Good kip. Only you've got to be here early. He lit a cigarette, took a deep drag and passed it to me. I hesitated and he chuckled, exhaling smoke. Go on, might as well. You'll not see 60 anyway, dusting in doorways. I took a drag and started choking and he laughed. See what I mean, he said. Halfway there already. If you think that sleeping rough's just a matter of finding a dry spot where the fuzz won't move you on and getting your head down, you're wrong. Not your fault, of course. If you've never tried it, you'd no way of knowing what it's like. So what I thought I'd do was sort of talk you through a typical night. That night in the vaudeville alcove won't do because there were two of us and it's worse if you're by yourself. So you pick your spot wherever that is, unless you're in a squat or a derelict house or something, it's going to have a floor of stone, tile, concrete or brick. In other words, it's going to be hard and cold. It might be a bit cramped too. Shop doorways often are. And remember, if it's winter, you're going to be half frozen before you even start. Anyway, you've got your place and if you're lucky enough to have a sleeping bag, you unroll it and get in. Settle for the night? Well, maybe, maybe not. Remember my first night, the scouser? Of course you did. He kicked me out of my bedroom and pinched my watch. Well, that sort of thing can happen any night, and there are worse things. You could be peed on by a drunk or a dog. Happens all the time. One man's bedroom is another man's lavatory. You might be spotted by a gang of lager louts on the lookout for someone to maim. That happens all the time too. And if they get carried away, you could end up dead. There are the guys who like young boys, who think that because you're a dosser, you'll do anything for dosh. And there's the psycho, he'll knife you for your pack. So, you lie listening. <laughs> you bet you do. Footsteps, voices, breathing even. Doesn't help you sleep. Then there's your bruises. What bruises? Try lying on the stone floor for half an hour. Just half an hour. You can choose any position you fancy and you can change position as often as you like. 
You won't find it comfy, I can tell you. You won't sleep unless you're dead drunk or zonked on downers. And if you are and you do, you're going to end up, you're going to wake up with bruises on hips, shoulders, elbows, ankles, knees, especially if you're a bit thin from not eating properly. And if you do that six hours a night for six nights, you'll feel like you fell out of the train. Try sleeping on the concrete then. And don't forget the cold. If you've ever tried dropping off to sleep with cold feet, even in bed, you'll know it's impossible. You've got to warm those feet up or lie awake. And in January, in a doorway, in wet trainers, it can be quite a struggle. And if you manage it, chances are you'll need to get up for a pee. And then it starts all over again. And those are only some of the hassles. I haven't mentioned stomach cramps from hunger, headaches from the flu, toothache, fleas, lice. And I haven't gone about homesickness, depression or despair. I haven't gone into how it feels to want a girlfriend when your circumstances make it virtually impossible for you to get one. How it feels to know that you're a social outcast. In fact, a non-person to whom every ordin sorry, ordinary everyday activity is closed. So you lie on your bruises, listening, trying to warm your feet. You curl up on your side and your hip hurts. So you stretch out on your back so your feet stay cold and the concrete hurts your heels. You force yourself to lie still for a bit, thinking that'll help you drop off, but it doesn't. Your pack feels like a rock under your head and your nose is cold. You wonder what time it is. Can you stop listening now or could someone still come? Distant chimes. You strain your ears, counting one o'clock? Can't only be one o'clock, surely. I've been here hours. Did I miss a chime? What's that? Sounds like breathing. Heavy breathing. As in a maniac. Lie still. Quiet. Maybe he won't see you. Listen. Is he still there? Silence now. Creeping up, perhaps? No. Relax. Jeez, my feet are cold. A thought out of nowhere. My old room at home. My little bed. What I wouldn't give for... No, mustn't. Mustn't think about that. No sleep that way. Somebody could be asleep in that room right now. Warm and dry, safe. Lucky sod. Food. Oh, God, don't start on about food. Remember that time in Whitby? Fish and chip cap. <gasps> Long, sizzling haddock. Heaps of chips like a mountain. So many, you had to leave some. Wish I had them now. Mum. Wonder what Mum's doing. Wonder if she wonders where I am. Wonder how she'd feel if she knew. I miss you, Mum. Do you miss me? Does anybody? Chimes again. Quarter past. Quarter past one? I don't believe it. DSS. Are they considering my claim? Not now they're not. They're sleeping. Snuggles a bug in a rug. Do they know what it feels like kipping in a doorway? No. And so it goes on. Hour after hour. Now and then you doze a bit, but only a bit. You're so cold, so frightened, and it hurts so much that you end up praying for morning, even though you're dog tired, even though tomorrow is certain to be every bit as grim as yesterday. And the worst part is knowing you haven't deserved any of it. I walked all the way... <coughs> oh. <laughs> Who are you barking at? Who are you barking at? I'm busy working. Trouble. I'm busy working. Are you noisy? Are you? Are you noisy?